Hello, my name is April Holtree. In my theory class, I am going to present Catherine Calcaba's The Comfort Theory. Catherine Calcaba was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1944. She received her nursing degree from St. Luke's Hospital of Nursing. She graduated from the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing at Case Western Reserve University in 1987. In 1997, Catherine Kokaba received her Ph.D. in nursing and received a certificate of authority as a clinical nurse specialist. Her education specialized in gerontology, end-of-life, and long-term care interventions, comfort studies, instrument development, nursing theory, and nursing research. Catherine Kalkaba used comfort as an active process or a product or outcome. The development of the comfort theory took a period of 10 years to accomplish. In 1991, Catherine Kalkaba published a taxonomic structure for the concept of the nursing theory. Catherine Kalkaba wrote the first step in developing the theory of comfort as a concept analysis conducted in 1988 when she was a graduate student. Over the next several years, the theory of comfort was initially published in 1994 and later modified in 2001. Her first article was published in 1991, an analysis of the concept of comfort. In 1994, she began to develop a diagram of the aspects of comfort that include six defining factors that examined what comfort is related to a middle range theory. In 1995, she published the article, The Art of Comfort Care, which describes the belief of comfort care in practice. In this, she included an article that was a testimony from a student who applied comfort theory and practice. She began the development of the comfort theory to be the standard outcome of nursing in 2001 when she published her article, Evolution of the Mid-Range Theory of Comfort for Outcome Research. In 2003, she published her book, Comfort Theory and Practice, A Vision for Holistic Healthcare and Research. She has received many awards for outstanding work in the Masters of Science in Nursing and many achievements of science awards among with other accolades during her career. In 2007, she retired from full-time teaching but continues to teach part-time by developing and researching comfort theories. Catherine Kokaba originally wrote The Theory of Comfort, Keeping Alzheimer's and Dementia Patients in Mind. She has co-written multiple articles with other authors related to her theory. Some examples are Evolution of the Middle Range Theory of Comfort for Outcome Research, Measuring Comfort in the Caregivers and Patients during late and end-of-life care, comfort care, a framework for hospice nursing and analysis of concept of comfort, the art of comfort care, and the practical application of comfort theory in the area of anesthesia setting, comfort care and its application to pediatric nursing, an article from pediatric nursing. Those mentioned were either written by Catherine Holkaba herself or were co-authored. Kalkaba defined comfort within nursing practice as the satisfaction actively, passively, or working cooperatively of the basic human needs of relief, ease, or transcendence arising from healthcare situations that are stressful. Catherine Kalkaba explained that the client's needs arise from the stimulus that can cause negative attention. Increasing comfort measures 
can result in having negative tensions reduced and positive tensions engaged. Comfort is viewed as an outcome of care that can promote or facilitate health-seeking behaviors. It is posted that increasing comfort can enhance self-seeking behaviors. One proposition notes that if enhanced comfort is achieved, patients, family members, and or nurses are strengthened to engage in health-seeking behaviors, which further enhances comfort. Comfort was recognized as early as 1859 by Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale recognized that comfort was essential for patients. She stated, It must never be lost sight of what observation is for, if not for the sake of piling up miscellaneous information, a curious fact, but for the sake of saving lives, increasing health, and comfort. In the 1970s, comfort was less renowned. Technology paved its way in the absence of patient comfort diminished. There were medical advances in the 1900s through the use of antibiotics, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and narcotics. Comfort then became a secondary strategy for the larger purpose of effecting cure. Catherine Kalkaba's dedication to the nursing practice and a strong belief in comfort care, she pressed through her comfort theory, which led to validations of research. Several authors have published her articles, and comfort reemerged as a mission for patient care. Advancements of theories showed either relationships of concepts that continuous research would open new perspectives and yield improvement in the dynamic world of nursing. Truly now, comfort measures, but the theoretical structures of the co-commerce comfort theory has the potential to direct the work and thinkings of all healthcare providers within one institution. The major influences in the development of the comfort theory are as such. Relief, Ida Orlando, Nursing Processing Theory. Ease, Virginia Henderson, The Need Theory. Transcendent. Josephine Patterson and Loretta Zared, Humanistic Nursing Theory. The framework for comfort theory was derived by Henry Murray. Henry Murray designed a conceptual framework diagrammed in three lines. Comfort theory took that framework and added another level to include a fourth line. The fourth line is the framework for the comfort theory. Calcaba's theory of comfort is classified as a high, middle-range theory, making it more general and abstract theory. The theory of comfort is closely related to a grand theory, which it is very abstract in general. This theory can be applied to a variety of experiences and responses. Middle-range theories include something specific related to nursing practice, such as a situation or condition of a particular patient population. Middle range theories also take into account populations, age, and location when working on development of a theory. A middle range theory also includes an intervention, proposed outcome, or an action of the nurse. Comfort was described as a product of holistic nursing practice. In comfort theory, specific concepts in the theory are organized into terms, three forms and four contexts of comfort. The three forms of comfort are relief, ease, and transcendence. Types of comfort are relief, which is having a particular comfort not met, ease, which is being or content, transcendence, a feeling that one can arise above a problem or pain. The four contexts in which comfort is experienced is physical, environmental, psychospiritual, and psychocultural. Relief is a state of having a specific disorder relieved. 
such as in an anesthesia setting, some of the common disorders in which this relates are pain, nausea, cold, or anxiety. Comfort usually comes from the form of pain management through medications. Medications are administered to the patient, providing them with a sense of relief from pain. Ease return, refers to the state of contentment for the patient. Patients with uncertainty in regards to their diagnosis may need emotional support to achieve comfort in this area. Nurses can prevent or minimize this need. Outpatients realizing they're doing this that's keeping the patient at a state of ease. This comfort is focused more on the environment and the psychological state of the patient. For example, issues of anxiety are dealt with and the patient feels at ease. Transcendence comfort comes when a patient is able to rise above challenges that occur in care and recovery. Transcendence encompasses the need for inspiration, strengthening, and motivation. Nurses often focus on meeting the needs of transcendence when they are fully unable to meet other types of comfort needs for their patients. For example, they may assist patients in use of distraction and relaxation breathing when nausea persists despite medication for the nausea. The context in which comfort occurs is experienced in four avenues. Physical involves bodily sensations and homeostasis. Psychospiritual are items such as self-esteem, self-concept, sexuality, meaning in life, spirituality, in which contribute to internal awareness, pertaining to the internal awareness of self and the relationship to a higher order or being. Environmental includes external surroundings such as temperature, light, sound, odor, color, furniture, landscape, and other factors in the background of the human conditions and influences. Sociocultural involves interpersonal family and social relationships such as finances, teaching healthcare professionals, etc. It may also refer to family traditions, rituals, and religious practices. Catherine Kalkaba utilizes the metro paradigm concept, nursing, patient, environment, and health. The nursing concept of her theory is the assessment of the comfort needs, promoting comfort for the patient, and reassessment of the comfort levels. Assessment can be objective or subjective. When the nurse is assessing, it is not only the patient that she is assessing, the potential needs of the family is also evaluated. Being able to manipulate the patient's surroundings to encourage comfort as an additional intervention the nurse is able to provide. Promoting optimal activities of daily living for the patient for optimal health promotion. According to Alagood and Tomey, Dr. Kokaba utilizes all areas of the metro paradigm because the patient is the focus of the intervention. Manipulating the patient's environment can be essential in providing comfort to a patient to alleviate the current state of discomfort. Nursing is an art, practice, and a discipline which involves caring. Goals of nursing include care of the well, care of the sick, assisting with self-care activities, helping individuals ascertain their human potentials, and discovering and using nature's law of health. The purpose is to restore health of the individual, facilitating development of an interaction between the nurse and the patient. Goals are set while performing harmony between the individual and the environment. The patient is referred to being composed of physical intelligence, biochemical and psychological needs, a human energy field, a holistic being in the world, an open system, an integrated whole. Environmentally typically refers to external elements that affect the person, internal and external conditions that influence that organism, significant others with whom that person interacts, and an open system with 
boundaries that permit the exchange of matter, energy, and information with human beings. Health is the, the ability to function independently, successfully, adaptation to life stressors, achievements of one's full life potential, and the unity of mind, body, and soul. The major concepts described in the theory of comfort are with three types of comfort care interventions. Comfort care in details at least three types of comfort interventions that can be implemented to achieve the goal of enhancing a patient's total comfort. Comfort care actions and interventions are your standard comfort interventions, coaching, and comfort food for the soul. The first are standard comfort interventions that are designed to maintain homeostasis, such as vital signs and laboratory results in responding to changes in patient assessment findings and indicate homeostatic compromise. Interventions also include attention to pain, hypothermia, administration of appropriate medications, and repositioning. These comfort measures are designed to help the patient to maintain or regain physical function in comfort and prevention of complications. The second type of comfort intervention is generally referred to as coaching. Coaching helps to relieve anxiety, provide reassurance and information to instill hope. It involves listening and offering an optimistic plan for recovery in a culturally sensitive way. The last group of comfort interventions is described as comfort food for the soul. Patients do not expect this type of intervention, but they are usually very pleased when it is offered. Examples of interventions that provide comfort food for the soul are massages, adapting the environment to embrace warmth, music therapy, touch, and hand holding. Like comfort food that we eat, these comfort interventions make patients feel strengthened in an intangible, personalized way. Comfort food for the soul targets the need for transcendence through memorable connections between the nurse and the patient or family. Holistic comfort interventions can be used to target many comfort needs at one time. For example, providing medications and non-pharmacological, non-integrated interventions can adjust the patient's needs across the four contexts of comfort. A patient receiving music therapy can have a need of relief and transcendence met simultaneously. Ease is addressed by the contentment the patient feels while listening to a favorite type of music. The music addresses relief by calming the patient and thereby reducing the discomfort of anxiety. Transcendence is addressed when the music allows the patient to think positively or spiritually. The conceptual framework for the comfort theory addresses the healthcare needs of the patient and family. Comforting interventions, intervening variables, enhance comfort, health-seeking behaviors, internal and external, and a peaceful death. Institutional integrity are the best practices, best policies. The context for use in nursing implications of the theory of comfort observes the patient experience needs for comfort and stressful healthcare situations. Some of these needs identified by the nurse will then implement interventions to meet the needs. Calcaba stated that comfort theory can be adapted at any healthcare setting or any group. Understanding of comfort can promote nursing care that is holistic and inclusive of physical, psychospiritual, social, and environmental interventions. It is noted that any unhappy, unhealthy, or unwell patient can be made more comfortable. Finally, outcomes of comfort can be measured holistically, positive, and nurse sensitive. When you are able to utilize the conceptual framework, the patient will be able to obtain comfort.
the six propositionals to the theory of comfort. The theory has six basic concepts, nursing interventions, nursing variables, healthcare needs, healthcare seeking behaviors, patient comfort, and institutional integrity. The six propositionals are clearly outlined in Dr. Kalkaba's theory of comfort. One, the nurse identifies the comfort needs that have not been identified by the patient or the support person. Two, the nurse is responsible for designing interventions to address unmet needs of the patient. Three, the nurse creates interventions to help the patient achieve comfort by taking in the internal and external variables that could impact the intervention. Four, when comfort is achieved, the patient is encouraged to engage in health-seeking behaviors. Five, when the patient is able to participate in their own health-seeking behaviors, they achieve satisfaction related to their health care. When the patient, number six, is satisfied with their health care in a particular institution, that is when institution integrity is satisfied. If all six of these propositions are taken into effect, the patient will be brought to an acceptable level of comfort and be maintained for a period of time. It also promotes the holistic health needs for the patient, mind, body, and spirit. Evidence of empirical testing and the application of practice. The general comfort questionnaire contains 48 items with a like type scale that was developed to measure concepts and propositions described in the comfort theory. The general comfort questionnaire has been modified to be used for different populations in a number of studies. A shortened version of the general comfort questionnaire is also in use. Kalkaba described development of the other tools to assist in research and practice application for the theory of comfort. This includes the verbal rating scale questionnaire, the radiation theory comfort questionnaire, the hospice comfort questionnaire, the urinary incontinence and frequency questionnaire, and the comfort behavior checklist, which was developed to measure comfort for the patient that could not use traditional or other instruments. A number of research studies have been conducted by Kolkaba and her colleagues using the instruments listed. For example, Whitehead and his associates reported using Kokaba's instruments to study the effects of end-of-life nursing education program on nurses' death, anxiety, and knowledge of the dying process and related concerns. Also examining nursing care at the end of life, Murray used Kalkaba's instruments to assess spiritual beliefs and practices of nurses, comparing hospice nurses and nurses working in oncology in special units. Dolan, Quinn, Bryant, Lyons, and Kleinpel use Kolkaba's comfort theory as a part of framework for implementation of formal policies and procedures for family processes during CPR, along with two additional articles, March and McCormack, Wester, and Aurelio describe applications of comfort theory as a component of quality interdisciplinary health care. The art of comfort care that are resilient to hospice nursing practices use Kalkaba's framework of holistic comfort. Nurses can be comprehensive and consistent in assessing comfort and designing interventions to enhance the comfort of patients and families. The content domain of holistic comfort is conceptualized as interrelated parts as they are explained experienced simultaneously. The goal of palliative care is achievement of the best possible quality of life for the patient and their family. Hospice care offers a support system to help families cope during the patient's illness and throughout its treatment process. Patients select hospice with the understanding that cure is improbable, but comfort is possible. They want to make peace with their God and family and to somehow transcend physical and or mental pain. Regardless of the setting, the nurse, nurses are principal support to the patient and their families as they manage symptoms, offer support, and provide encouragement around the clock.
Kokaba's theory also developed comfort as a holistic, positive outcome of nursing care and has been applied in the critical care context as an advanced directive. So theory of comfort includes three important elements that are relevant to the care of the dying patient. First, the term comfort is derived from the Latin word comfortier, meaning to strengthen greatly. The strengthening provides the primary rationale for nurses to enhance comfort. Second, the process of comforting involves active participation of the patient and the family to enhance the patient's comfort. Third, for recipients, comfort care applies a continued active involvement that is facilitated by coaching from the hospice team. This definition describes comfort as immediate spirits, hands of being strengthened by having the needs of relief, ease, or transcendence met for context of the human experience, physical, psychospiritual, environmental, psychosocial. The comfort grid provides er, provided earlier in this presentation provides an organized structure for getting thorough and effective care to dying patients and their families. Comfort needs identified by gathering subjective and objective data and that in most healthcare situations is where the patient experiences total comfort. Rather, interventions are designed to enhance comfort compared to the previous baseline assessment. When one comfort is met, other needs are positively, positively affected and total comfort is met. Hospice journals do not generally contain data-based nursing research because first, the specialty is young in its terms of development and second, because research is thought to be intrusive during the dying process. If comfort is enhanced after the action as compared to the previous baseline, the intervention can be deemed a scientific comfort measure. Although total relief is not always possible, ease or transcendence may be obtained. When a cause of discomfort is primarily physical, psychological based interventions are in order. However, when physical discomfort has multiple psychospiritual, psychosocial, or environmental components, these also must be addressed. The concept of comfort and that the giving of comfort measures on the assessments of the patient's state of comfort is that the very essence of the nursing practice. Holistic comfort designates a positive state that is more than the absence of pain or other physical symptoms, such as nausea, constipation, itching, or infection. A holistic conceptualization of comfort is easily relevant for end of life because theoretically and increasingly comfort strengthens patients and caregivers in a spiritual sense to enable a peaceful death. The purpose of the theory is to guide research, practice, education, and administration. The theory must be subjective to examination. Theories are capable of being tested and create reliable guides for scholarly work. The theory addresses the most essential and relevant issues in nursing. Catherine Kokaba's middle range theory of comfort is applicable to all areas of the healthcare field. Though her theory is currently patient and family centered, the possibility of expansion is endless. The theory renders practice more effective and efficient, and the ultimate belief of theory application in nursing is the improvement in the client's care. The strength of the comfort theory requires only a simple, common sense approach. Comforting interventions enhances patients' comfort. The patients and families engage in health-seeking behaviors. Institutions have better outcomes. The comfort theory uses easily visible variables that are easily measured by the nurse and can be used for research and performance review. The empirical adequacy of the theory of comfort has been utilized for dementia care, hospice care, and peri-anesthesial settings. The pragmatic adequacy is the concept of the theory of comfort is that in the end, everyone feels better when they are comfortable. This is not only focused on the patient, but also the family. The steps in comfort theory are able to be used in a daily nursing practice to provide comfort. The comfort theory is the framework that nurses can utilize 
in assessing patients to provide comfort to their patients. The significance of the theory of comfort is extremely an important concept for nursing as a practice in the art for our patients. The theory of comfort is designed to bring comfort to our patients. By utilizing Dr. Catherine Kalkaba's theory, following its concepts and framework, comfort can be achieved for our patients holistically. The six propositions of the theory of comfort are easily stated throughout Catherine Kolkaba's theory and are easily understood and can be applied to nursing practice daily. Internal criticism related to the comfort theory on the assumptions of comfort and the patient's needs to be considered related to relief, ease, and transcendence of the patient if this is to be accomplished through nursing intervention. While reviewing the literature of the comfort theory, it is my assumption that the theory is very consistent with the processes of providing comfort to the patients through relief, ease, and transcendence. Allowing middle-range theories the ability to be tested, middle-range theories are more specific and have fewer concepts, the encompassing a more limited aspect of the real world. The concepts are relatively concrete. Propositions also relatively concrete and may be empirically tested. Middle range theories provide a better basis for generally testable hypothesis in addressing client populations. There are external criticisms related to the comfort theory, whereas hospice nurses utilize many of the theory aspects of the comfort theory, but do not lay claim to utilizing the comfort theory as its premise. I believe the use of comfort theory in nursing is very realistic and possible in achieving comfort for patients. By utilizing the comfort theory and its clearly stated main components, relief, ease, and transcendence, all patients will be able to achieve some comfort. The theory is consistent when reviewing the literature and the theory itself. It is clear and easily understood on how the conflict theory works in nursing practice related to the patient and their family. The description of the theory maintains its key concepts throughout the explanation of the theory. The deviation of the theory was noted and thought out throughout the literature review. The consistency of the use of the theory was noted. Terminology varied minimally throughout the literature review, but remained very consistent to the base terminology found in the theory itself. Testability, there was no specific evaluation process from a taxonomic structure that the nurse filled in by documenting the impl implementation to achieve comfort, which was previously mentioned with regular nursing assessment. The nurse would need to know if comfort had been achieved or if further interventions needed to be created. The nurse will collect the data objectively or subjectively to evaluate the intervention they had implemented for the comfort of their patient. The testing of the comfort theory can only be proven by the end results that the patient experiences. Patient experience comfort in many different ways. Some struggle to achieve comfort, even with the best intervention. When the patient is experiencing an uncomfortable situation, to get a true evaluation of the patient's current situation, it may be difficult due to the nature of the patient's current state of discomfort. They may not be cooperative with the initial assessment or understand the questions you're asking, nor do they want to answer. However, to reevaluate for changes in their discomfort after intervention has been utilized, a more true state of comfort would be communicated to the nurse, unlike during the state of discomfort. The theory has minimal clarity. Utilizing the conceptual diagram, the propositions of the concepts make it more understandable than making it more clearly stated. The limitations of the comfort theory lies in research when the concept of comfort is limited and the meaning of comfort has not been defined. The concept of comfort might need to be taught to those who do not come by this skill naturally. Who can benefit from the comfort theory? Patients, family members, students, communities, prisoners, elderly, special needs children, and healthcare workers. In conclusion, as immediate experience of being strengthened through having the needs of relief, ease, and transcendence met, and the four contexts of experience, physical, psychospiritual, environmental, and socio 
psychosocial. Catherine Kolkaba states, The comfort theory states that in stressful healthcare situations, unmet needs for comfort are met by nurses.